Guys, we're going to be doing quite a bit of these, so let's go ahead and uh, get started on this. Okay, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have a function that is differentiable and continuous. All right? We look at here, we say it's a polynomial. It's going to be differentiable and continuous. Um, did I give you this one actually on a, where's my picture? Just want to make sure that we also have a given interval, which I don't remember on this one. Okay, so there's no open, there's no interval. Um, so then the next thing we want to do, because they give this this, step number one is to identify the critical values. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3 halves times 2 x. Does everybody follow me this? So we go ahead and find the derivative f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3x. Okay, step one, we found the derivative. Now step number two, we want to find these critical values, right? So critical values is all we're going to do is set our derivative equal to zero. And we need to solve. We see this is a quadratic, so we're going to want to use our factoring technique. Um, zero equals 3x times x minus 1. So we could say by applying the zero product property, you could say x equals 0 and x equals 1. So those are our critical values, right? Those are our possible extrema, all right? We got to be able to make, that's where the horizontal tangent is. Um, we have a horizontal tangent at these values. They could be our max and mins, but we have to be able to test. We don't just want to assume, because remember there is that option three, right? There's that option three that it can change from positive to positive. So just, just because you have here, don't assume that these are going to be a max or a min. We have to go and test our intervals. Now, I'm going to show you one thing to me that makes sense, but I don't want you guys to use it on your exam. I'll show you guys what I'll have you guys do on your exam. But I just want, I like using this, and I taught this for uh, vertical motion because it's kind of just makes sense to me. You have your number line, right? You know here is your extrema. What we need to do is identify if f prime of x is going to be positive or negative. We know at this value and this value, x is going to equal So let's go ahead. So this is going to go to negative infinity to infinity, right? Because we're looking into creating our intervals. So between negative infinity and 0, we need to pick a value to determine if it's positive or negative. And probably a good number to be simple, I would say, would be negative 1. At 0, we know that at 0, f prime has to be equal to 0, right? Because that's how we found those values. I need to pick a value in between 0 and 1, so I'll pick 1 half. And then I need to pick a, a value after there, so I'll pick Okay, um, now basically what we need to do is plug in negative 1 into our derivative function and determine if it's going to be positive or negative. So if you plug in negative 1, that becomes positive, that becomes positive. So we could write positive. It's a simple form, but a preferred mathematical notation would be f prime of x is greater than 0. Okay, so I'll use positive for it to kind of make sense, but we would prefer to be using mathematical notation, especially with a, taking an AP exam. At 1 half, let's just go ahead and plug that. Um, so 1 half, that's going to be 1 fourth. So you'd have 3 fourths minus um, 3 halves. So that's going to be negative, or f prime of x is less than 0, because 3 halves is larger than 3 fourths. And then we go ahead and plug in 2, and you guys can see that that's positive, or f prime of x is greater than 0. So the way that it makes sense, we're looking like this. But do not, you do not want to use this as your justification. Okay? Basically, um, I'll, I'll, write in, I'll do another problem where I'll show you the justification of how I would write it out. But I want to kind of show you guys this way so you guys can kind of relatively see what the process would be. So we can say, um, you guys can see that it's increasing on two different intervals. Right? Remember, we j remember I just wrote up there, wherever the derivative is positive, we know the function is increasing, just like how we kind of talked about velocity. So it's increasing on the intervals negative infinity to 0 and on the interval 1 to infinity. You could also use the union to connect those if you wanted to. It's decreasing on the interval of uh, 0 to 1. And I am going to write this in non 
perfect format for you. You could also say that um, you can see from here to here, it changes from positive to negative, right? So it changes that positive to negative. So we could say at x equals 0 is going to be a, let's see, positive to negative. So that's going to be a relative max. And at x equals 1 is a relative min. Again, please understand I am just going through the mathematics 